welcome, good morning to another House of Worship God broadcast. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity to spread the gospel once again. Uh, let's get right to it, amen. By your head. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for continuing to bless us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, thank you for this word that we are about to receive, Father. Lord, we ask that we can grasp this word and apply it to our lives every single day so that our lives can improve in you, Father. Because we know as long as we follow your instruction, follow your guidance, Father, we cannot go astray. So, Lord, thank you for continuing to be our shepherd and thank you for never leading us astray. We love you, Father, and thank you for loving us first. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. All right, all right. So, today we're going to talk about 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Amen. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. This is one of the two letters that John wrote to believers in the church. Amen, amen. And definitely want to uh, pray for traveling grace for our senior pastor. Amen. Uh, pray while he's traveling and handling some business on the road. So keep him in your prayers. Once again, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. I hope everyone is having a good morning um, and everyone is ready to receive this word. So, 15, it reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. And let the church say amen. So today I'm going to teach about the difference between loving the world and loving the kingdom and how our decisions affect the quality of our life. Amen. So it's, it's very clear. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. See, your love is reserved for, for one person. And that is for God himself. The way that we can love those around us truly is by loving God first. Because flesh does not know love. It knows lust. I repeat that. Flesh does not know love. It knows lust. God is the one. God is love. God created love. So... How can we get a better definition of love than going to the one who created it? So there's no greater definition of love than the creator of love. So one I want to talk about, oh, 16, he says, for all that is in the world. He said, there's nothing other than these three things that are in the world that we live in, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, if we know that those are the three things that the world offers, let's address these things so that once the world presents it to us, we know how to address it. We're not caught off guard. We're not, um, curious. We're not so curious about uh, what are the consequences. Because if we think about it, Eve was also in the presence of something that God told her not to pursue. 
but she also fell into the curiosity by the manipulation of the enemy of what would happen if she ate that fruit. So let's not leave an opening for the enemy to pique our curiosity into what the world has to offer, which leads us to sin. Amen. So, um, desires of the flesh. A few things that I could think of are smoking, drinking, sex, and food. Those are the few things, those are some of the few things that I thought that um, those are fleshly desires. Is because every single one of those things, they impact your flesh, they satisfy your flesh. So, it's funny how sometimes we don't even realize that, you know, we don't moderate or we don't limit um, these desires. You know, we just, sometimes we fall victim to our desires. Uh, how many times have somebody gone out drinking with friends and they drank too much, but they knew before even going out that they weren't a drinker. <laughs> you know, they, they didn't know how to um, handle, you know, that, the consumption of, of alcohol. So then you drink too much and then the next morning you're like, oh man, I'm never drinking again. Or you're like, oh man, you know, what else did I do that, I'm, that I don't remember I did? You know, because there are some people out there that, you know, uh, man, and there, there are some people that present themselves as your friends but they only want to see you um, intoxicated so that you can be their entertainment. Because the next morning, guess what? Some friends have a video of you um, intoxicated, not acting like yourself, you know, you're saying God knows what. And now you're embarrassed about how you conducted yourself while intoxicated because you had no control over yourself so you know there's another sermon there about um your circle your friends but i'm not going to go down that route because um, that's not my assignment for today but my assignment is to uh, make us reflect on the desires of our flesh because everybody doesn't have the same desire. You know, everybody doesn't have the same desire to smoke. Everybody doesn't have the same desire to drink or to fornicate or to uh, eat in abundance. You know, like everybody doesn't have that desire. Um, so how do we, how do we limit this desire? How do we moderate this desire? Now, some people will say, stay away from it completely. And if you don't have the self-discipline, you know, if your spirit man is not strong enough to discipline your flesh, I, I would agree with that. Stay away from it. Because you don't want your flesh to um, manipulate you into thinking that, that you got this under control, but you have not shown discipline <laughs> in the past, you know, so don't let your flesh convince you to think something that is not true. So, how do we moderate? Well, one thing that we would have to do is not put ourselves in a position where we are still figuring out moderation in front of the, you know, in front of a large crowd. Because let's say we go out to dinner and I choose to have a glass of wine. But you feel as if you can, you know, join the party, you know, like, oh, he's having a glass of wine, you know, let me have one too. But you haven't consumed wine 
like this before. You know, there's you know, there's levels to wine. So in that moment, you're finding, but see, if I already know how this one glass of my low or whatever type of wine it is affects me, then you know I've I've already experimented, I already know my line of moderation. But if you have not, and we're out in the public setting, and this one and that same glass of wine causes you to, you know, <laughs> start tripping, you know, you going off, you know, hey, you out of control, you no longer control yourself because the wine has um, and made you uh, intoxicated. So now you're in a public setting and now you have to depend on those around you to keep you from embarrassing yourself even more. So that's what I mean by not experimenting your moderation in public. So at first, buy a bottle of wine and you know take it a, a glass at a time <laughs> take it a glass at a time but and also don't become a functioning alcoholic or a functioning drug addict you know no there there is a line of moderation that you have to discover for yourself and also if you are the type that just does not have that discipline, that you have not invested the spiritual growth into your spirituality, which disciplines your flesh, I would recommend to leave it alone because the lack of discipline is the key here. Your, your level of discipline depends on your level of your, if you can discover your line of moderation. So, that's what I would say when it comes to moderating your desires is you have to know that this cannot go past this line. This can, it, you know, I have to put a limit here. Amen. So, and it's also, you know, not living in excuses because um, we can say that you know i smoke because my dad smoked or my mom smoked we can say that i drink because my parents drank we can you know say that uh, my parents were fornicators we can say that my parents were obese you know this just runs in the family you know and we we kind of take those excuses to excuse our behavior but we cannot blame our parents for the decisions that we make as an adult. You know, that time has passed whenever you can say, you know, they did this to me, they did that, you, you're grown now. You know, you can't continue to, to, to rely on that excuse to excuse your lack of growth. So, it, and it takes maturity. It, it really takes growth to be able to say, I will not live in excuses I will take accountability for my actions and I will do better next time. See, it's one thing if you get drunk uh, one time, you know, because you didn't know your line of moderation. But it's another thing if every weekend you get drunk. Now, you knew how many shots, how many glasses it takes for you to get to that level. But you blatantly chose to do it again. And that's where you start to see that the, that the discipline is not there. You start to see that your priorities are out of line because you knew that three glass or you know, even if it was one glass, even if it was one glass, you knew that that was too much, but yet you decided to do it again. So learn from those mistakes, learn those lessons so you don't continue to make the same mistakes, so you don't continue to repeat the same sin, amen? And so he goes down to uh, the next is the lust of the eyes. And if you, uh, if you're looking for the scripture, First John two and sixteen, uh, the lust of the eyes. So anything you see that causes your lust to rise, you know, um, even in a song, you know, we heard, you know, can't trust a big butt and a smile, you know, 
you use your eyes to see both of those things. So, and it's really the same things that, you know, kind of go hand in hand with the flesh, you know, smoking, drinking, sex, food. You know, you see, if you see these things, then they can entice a, a lustful response. You know, they can cause, you know, your lust to start activating. And now, you know, now by what you see is now determining how you act, your behavior, your the way that you're thinking about uh, something or someone, because you see this, um, you see this thing that is causing lust, and it is starting to blur your vision. Um, how many times have we pursued something because the lust blurred our vision? Um, we thought that it was good because. Mm, Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit once again brought back Eve in the garden. We pursued something that looked good, but it truly was not good for us. Because if you continue to read what happened in the garden, if it was meant for us to eat from the tree, then we would not have been cursed. Everybody that played a part in that, in that situation was cursed. The man, the woman, and the snake. So, how often do we pursue things that look good, but they truly are not good for us? In the pursuit of me building my rental car company, I financed a Tiguan, a 2020 Tiguan. And man, when I tell you, I mean, had the tires shining, you know, the, the paint was good, you know, had tint on it already, you know, wheels glistening, uh, leather seats, you got, you know, you got all the little bells and whistles that, that entice you to say, ooh, we, this is a good deal right here. This is a good deal right here. And then down the line, I started noticing or, well, I started noticing and listening <laughs> that my finances are in bondage for, and that's what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. He said, you signed up for financial bondage for the next four to five years. And when he showed me that, man, when I say that I felt so so small, I felt just like, oh, what have I done? Exactly like whenever someone goes out with their friends and they drink too much. And the next morning, they're like, what have I done? See? And all glory to God that once he gave me the revelation, I was willing to let it go. I was, man, I had more than one car I was financing. And that's what he showed me, was that if you keep, <laughs> woo, if you keep signing up for financial bondage, how do you expect to leave your kids anything if you're just making it? And I want people to learn from my testimony. Because the world is the one that advocates financing. It doesn't advocate ownership. It doesn't advocate um, buying a car that has already depreciated value and, and owning the car that has hit its true value. The world promotes buying the newest item and, <laughs> excuse me, not buying it, but financing it. Financing just gives you access to someone else's item. And I'm not gonna go down that that path, but I just have to say that because my eyes, the lust of my eyes is what got me to sign on the line for that Tiguan. And I give God the glory for giving me the will to give back that car because, okay, I'm, to give back that car because it shows me, it shows God, both of them that my priority is him and not these items. 
So the next one is the pride of life. And the pride of life. The pride of life is people that are, I have accomplished this, I have done this. Um, you know, just running down their resume of their accomplishments. And I had to ask myself, what is your purpose? What is your motive to being a business owner? Is your reasoning for being a business owner just to be able to boast about your businesses, about the success of your businesses, about the, you know, about the car that your businesses are able to provide? Or, you know, is it about the wealth that your businesses obtain? Or is it about being in a position to offer people jobs, offer people a source of income, offer them training on, on a skill so that they can apply this skill and create a business for themselves? You know, are, is this business only created to serve you? Or is this business created to serve the kingdom. See, we have to always, okay, the world promotes going to chase the bag. Everybody's chasing the bag, right? Everybody wants six, seven figures. Everybody wants the money. But we forget that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. See, I don't love money. I love God. I like money. Money does pay these bills. But I also know that money is only a resource. God is the source. So we have to make sure that we don't misprioritize our motives to make sure that we continuously can say that I love God and I like money. Not that I love money and I like God. See, whenever we are able to get our priorities um, in check, then we will not fall victim into loving lust, which is the title of this message, Loving Lust. And whenever we're able to prioritize God over lust, over desires, over our personal fulfillment, then we can truly start to experience an abundance of life. So, pride of life. What is that? What, what in your life are you prideful in? Some people say, you know, I take pride in my work. I take pride in my, in my, in my shape, you know, in my body. I take pride on on my degrees, I take pride, you know, whatever that sentence, whatever you fill in that blank with, what is it that you are prideful of in your life? And I want you to ask yourself, what does that pride have to do with your salvation? Matter of fact, does that pride keep you from receiving salvation? See, there's, okay, the Holy Spirit showed me the, the testimony of, in Matthew 19, 16 through 26. I don't have time today to necessarily run it down, but next time, you know, I'm preaching, uh, I will, or even if it's an off the wall Wednesday, I'll walk that out. But he showed me that um, some people, are not willing to trade in what they are prideful for for the kingdom. So if, you know, example, if you're prideful in your work, if you're prideful, okay, let's use work. If you're prideful in your work and Jesus was to say to leave your job and come follow him, would your pride in your work take priority over 
picking up your cross and following Jesus. So, in conclusion, I'm going to leave you with one question. Are you willing to sell your worldly identity for your kingdom identity? I'll repeat that. Are you willing to sell your worldly identity for your kingdom identity? And that's how I'm going to close this message. Amen. Is I'm going to leave you with that question. And that answer is between you and the Father. And I pray that you choose kingdom. Amen. All right. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray out. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for continuing to show us that we need to prioritize you, Father. We love you. We don't love the resources, Father. We love you. We will not fall into love of lust. We will continue to love you, Father. Prioritize you. You are God Almighty, El Shaddai, Father. And we will not be led astray by, the, by these other idols that are out here trying to cause us to commit idolatry. We will continue to put you first, Father, because we know there is no God like you. Nobody, no man, no other God, nothing can compare to you, Father, because you are God by yourself. You don't need our help to be God. So, Lord, we thank you for being who you are and not just for what you can do, Father, because we know that you are the reason why we are able to say that I love God because I know he loves me. He loved me before I even knew him. He loved me before I was even in my mother's womb. So, Father, I thank you for going before me, and I thank you for giving us your, your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father. So, Lord, thank you for continuing to be who you are and showing us that you are the creator of love, and we should love you and not lust after you. Thank you, Father. We love you, and thank you for loving us first. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 So I pray that this word, um, man, is a game changer in your life. I pray that you take action on this word. I pray that you utilize this word. I pray that you do not sit on this word. That every single day that you will look at your priorities, reevaluate yourself, reevaluate how you have prioritized God in your life. Amen. Uh, we are a giving church. Our cash app is H-E-S-C-H-U-R-C-H, -H -H, the number two. H-E-S-C-H-U-R-C-H, -H -H, the number two. Amen. Uh, we're, we have Off the Wall Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And on Sundays, we have another sermon for you, a word from the Lord, uh, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So please continue to look out for us. We're on facebook and we're also on youtube so if you weren't able to catch us live well we also have uh the recording on uh youtube so please continue to support um, and most of all continue to serve the lord and be a blessing don't just look for a blessing amen god bless you